Hi folks, let's walk through how we made this Stuart Haas Racing decal squeegee tool. This gets me so fired up because it shows how you can use your three axis, four axis, or five axis machine with some pretty clever work holding and cam tricks to make a relatively complicated part really simply with the combination of window machining, tabs, and wait for it, hot glue. Now, when I say complicated, no, this isn't an intricate part in a V8 engine or for an aerospace design, but there are no flat or normal faces that would make this part easy to hold for OP2. What gets me so fired up about this is that whether you're a job shop, whether you're doing R&D, whether you're prototyping, having this workflow and this technique in your back pocket is super helpful. We started off by taking some quick measurements on one of the rubber squeegees and sketching up the design, trying to put everything in one sketch that helps keep your model clean and you can make all your adjustments in one place. We extrude that sketch, then add some fillets, and then other than adding the Stuart Haas logo that we want to engrave on here, we're done with the solid modeling side of this. We then added our fifth axis work holding technique, and we've got all that information and sample models and files over on the NYC CNC page where we've got a video walking through that process. And what we're doing here is one additional step. We've got our vise, we've got our base, we've got our part, we've got our stock material, but we're adding something called the window. So how does the window work? In our main cam setup, you would normally have the body selected as the actual part. But we've got two bodies here because we've also chosen to add the window to the body. What that means is when you use any of the 3D toolpaths, those are toolpaths in Fusion 360 that are model aware. And model literally means the models that we've selected in the setup. So having this CAD model of window means we can take our stock and machine our stock away, but still leave the window area as well as, of course, the actual squeegee. And a big shout out to Rob Lockwood. I don't believe he invented window machining, but he did invent an incredible workflow for it. Card here to his streamlining cam workflows class at Autodesk University, where he showed off this file with a very similar workflow, but what he's done is built out a parametric window frame. So using user parameters where we can control not only the size of that window, but the bottom offset, the angle, that taper, and the front and the back offset of the part relative to the stock. You can click through to watch that video over on the AU website, and Rob has also made those files available to download. You'll see later on, we're gonna to want to use toolpaths that will violate that window. And if we don't update what we've defined as our model, Fusion won't finish machining them because it won't violate that window. And in those toolpaths, all that we have to do under geometry is override the model by checking model, choosing the part as the body, and uncheck includes setup model. That will ignore the fact that in our CAM setup, we had the window chosen. We've added two comments as manual NCs to our template. And these are really helpful when we're running apart the first time because I can drag these and bracket the code that I post because a lot of times I'll just run a section of the code, see how it goes. And sometimes you get distracted or a part spans a day and this helps you know how much you've run and what's left to do. We're splitting up the adaptive into a top and bottom section. What this lets us do is rough out the top of the part, do our finishing passes to maximize the rigidity, which is gonna give us better surface finishes before we come down and do the bottom half. After that, we do some surfacing to finish up the outside of the part.
And then it gets to the fun part. So while we still have a full floor or a full window, albeit a thin one, in fact, if we turn on inspect section and analysis, we can click on this face, drag it back, and you can see just how thin that remaining part of that window is. It's surprising though how much rigidity or how stable a part can be when it's windowed or encapsulated by even a relatively thin area. And what that lets us do is one of the most critical parts of this particular tool, which is to surface in the correct radius to get a really good finish because this is pushing up against those cars in the decal. So it can't have any burrs, it can't have any sharp edges. We programmed in some manual NC stops. This will add an M0 command to your G code, and this will cause your machine to stop machining. The tower light will start blinking, and the machine will wait for you to come over and hit cycle start again to resume programming. I'll do this in situations where I want to inspect the part before the next operation. And here, we want to make sure we really like this part before we start machining away the window frame that's currently acting as our rigid work holding. The scallop toolpaths surfaced in the radius for the squeegee and also served as an edge break chamfer so there's no sharp edges on the squeegee. They also broke through most of the window, leaving us a short strip on each side of the part where there's four tabs as well as some other remnant material. Now in other videos, we've taken a pair of snips or wire cutters and just snipped the tabs off. But let's machine those tabs off and the trick is using a hot glue gun or if your part lends itself to mechanically fasten it. Say you've got a fixture where you can bolt the part with a through hole to a mechanical clamp to arrest that part. Let's secure it in place. The part has not moved because it's still secured by those four tabs. It's not particularly rigid. So we're gonna use the hot glue to pop that part in or secure that part in along the areas where it's cut through. We don't have to come back and machine those areas. This will secure the part and hold it in place as we'll take some light cleanup cuts to machine those tabs away. Oftentimes, we'll take relatively light step downs and we'll leave one thousandth of an inch radial stock. That way the end mill isn't actually contacting the part, but rather staying one thousandth of an inch off of it as it's machining down the tab. And if needed, you can come back and still take subsequent cleanup passes to quote unquote walk that in. And then you're done. We scotch brighted this one just to give it a nice consistent matte finished look to it. But definitely practice with this, make use of it. We did it a long time ago on the Tormach on a three axis part, showing how you can window machine it by just flipping the part over and having a reference datum. It'll work great on a fourth axis, whether you're using a tombstone or directly holding the part uh, on a platter, or obviously on a five axis machine as well. We'll have the link to the CAD file for this in the video description below. As always though, folks, hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon. For those of you that are wondering, we had briefly published an absolutely amazing tour of Stuart Haas Racing. Unfortunately, we did have to take that video down. However, we're still working with the team. I'd really like to be able to reintroduce that video and it may make the most sense to sit on it for a few months until sort of the end or even after the current NASCAR season because I wanna show as much of that tour as we possibly can. Even if you're not a NASCAR or even a racing fan, seeing what they do, how they build the cars, the amount of technology, process, equipment, it's just absolutely amazing and inspiring tour. Uh, so we're definitely bummed that we had to take it down, but we appreciate the team working with us to figure out how we can get that video back up.